Chapter 6 The Unwanted Guest Theme Presence of Mind Kickstart This play is based on Saki's story The Miracle Merchant However keeping in mind the restrictions of a stage setting certain liberties have been taken with the text Two friends of his mother who do not see eye to eye are scheduled to be at their country house at the same time. So Clovis, the son of Mrs. Beauvisel, takes upon himself the task of tackling a trickly situation for his mother. Their old trusted butler plays a stellar role in the entire act, albeit without being told of actual situation. Read through this humorous account of how intelligently Clovis handles the whole situation. Characters Mrs. Bewissel Clovis, her son Sturridge, the butler Jane Martlett, Mrs. Bewissel's guest Dining room in Mrs. Bewissel's country house Mrs. Bewissel is seated at the table. She is having her breakfast. Enter Clovis. Mrs. Bewissel, I have just had a letter from Dora Bithalls to say she is coming on Thursday. Clovis, this next Thursday? Isn't it rather awkward? Mrs. Bewissel, why awkward? Clovis, Jane Martlett has only been here five days and she never stays less than a fortnight. You'll never get her out of the house by Thursday. Mrs. Bewissel, why should I? She and Dora are good friends, aren't they? They used to be. Clovis, they used to be. That's what makes them such better enemies now. Mrs. Bewissel, but what has happened? What have they quarreled about? Clovis, a hen. Mrs. Bewissel, a hen? What hen? Clovis, it was a bronze like horn or some such breed. And Dora sold it to Jane at a rather higher price. Mrs. Bewissel, if Jane agreed to the price, I don't see what there was to quarrel about. Clovis, well you see, it turned out the bird would not lay eggs. And I am told that the letters which passed between the two women were extremely rude. Mrs. Bewissel, how ridiculous! Couldn't some of their friends get them to end the quarrel? Clovis, people tried. Jane was willing to take back some of her most insulting remarks if Dora would take back and hen. If Dora would beg, if Dora would take back the hen. Mrs. Bewissel, and did she? Clovis, no, she said that would be admitting she was in the wrong, and Dora would never do that. Mrs. Bewissel, having both of them here would be a most awkward situation. Do you suppose they won't speak to each another? Do you suppose they won't speak to each other? Clovis, on the contrary, the difficulty will be to get them to stop speaking. Mrs. Bewistle, what is to be done? I can't put Dora off. I have already postponed her visit once, and nothing short of a miracle would make Jane leave before her fortnight is over. Clovis, I don't mind trying to supply a miracle at short notice. Mrs. Bewistle, as long as you don't drag me into it. Exit Mrs. Bewissel. Enter Jane. Sturridge enters with a white toast rack and places it on the table. Jane helps herself to a toast. Exit Sturridge. Clovis. Servants are a bit of a nuisance. Jane Martlett. Servants a nuisance? I should think they were. The trouble I have had in getting a good servant. 
but i don't see what they have to complain of your mother is so wonderfully lucky in her servants starrets for instance he's been with you for years and i am sure he's a jewel as far as butlers go clovis ah uh, that's just the trouble it's when servants have been with you for years that they become a really serious nuisance the here today and gone tomorrow so it doesn't matter you have simply got to replace them it's the stairs and the jewels that are the real worry jane martlet but if they give satisfaction clovis that doesn't prevent them from giving trouble now you have mentioned storage it was storage i was particularly thinking of when i made the remark about servants being a nuisance jane martlet the excellent storage and nuisance i can't believe it clovis i know he is excellent but have you ever considered what it must be like to go on unceasingly doing the correct thing in the correct manner in the same surroundings for the greater part of a lifetime jane martlet i should go mad clovis exactly mad jane martlet but sturridge hasn't gone mad clovis on most points he is thoroughly sane and reliable but at times he is subject to delusions jane martlet delusions what sort of delusions clovis unfortunately they usually center around the guests that is where the awkwardness comes in now and then he gets some idea about a guest which might take an unfortunate turn that is precisely what is worrying me at the present moment jane martlet why has he taken some fancy about me clovis yes jane martlet who on earth does he think i am clovis queen anne jane martlet queen anne what an idea but anyhow there is nothing dangerous about her she is such a colorless personality clovis what does history chiefly say about queen anne jane martlet uh, the only thing that i can remember about her is the saying queen anne is dead clovis exactly dead jane martlet Do you think he takes me for the ghost of Queen Anne? Clovis. Ghost? No. No one ever heard of a ghost that came down to breakfast and ate toast and honey with a healthy appetite. No, it's the fact of you being so very much alive and flourishing that bewilders and annoys him. All his life he has thought of Queen Anne as standing for everything that is dead and done with and now he has to fill your glass at lunch and dinner and listen to your stories and naturally he feels that something's very wrong with you Jane Martlet but he wouldn't harm me on that account would he Clovis I didn't get really alarmed about it till lunch today I caught him looking at you with a very threatening look and muttering ought to be dead long ago she ought and someone should see to it Jane Martlet This is awful your mother must be told about it at once Clovis My mother must not hear a word about it it would upset her dreadfully she relies on storage for everything Jane Martlet but he might kill me at any moment clovis not in any moment he is busy with his work all afternoon jane martlet what a dreadful situation to be in with a mad butler dangling over one's head but i'm certainly not going to cut my visit short exit clovis dismayed what a woman <laughs> enter starage He begins cleaning the table. Clovis looks at him reflectively. Clovis, where is Miss Martlet? 
storage in the morning room sir writing letters clovis pointing to a sword on the wall she wants to copy the inscription on the blade i wish you would take it to her her hands are oily take it without the sheath it will be less trouble storage yes sir storage goes out holding sword enters jane running jane martlet clovis clovis where are you rushes upstairs enters storage storage perplexed miss martlet ran out of the room as i entered she has called for the car to take her to the station saki about the author hector hugh munro 1870 to 1916 better known by the pen name saki was a british author best known for his witty short stories born in british burma he moved to england as he embarked on his literary career he picked up the name saki from the rubaiyat a long poem by 12th century persian writer umar khayyam when world war first began the writer rushed to enlist during a night march through france in 1916 he was shot and killed by a german sniper <laughs>